So there's a lot of questions here. I hear a lot of people I've met this morning and they're like, all right, I get this thing full circle. It's exciting. I want more analytics, more reporting. How does it actually work? Show me how it works in practice, in reality. How does it affect my company? And that's what I want to tell you guys about today. Um, Josh has asked me to put together some killer CMO dashboards. We don't have a CMO on a float up. We have a VP of marketing. But it's the same thing. I think the idea is that I want to show you what we use on a day to day basis uh, with Full Circle that is not just something for a very technical person to look at, you know, the most techie marketing ops person, but something that a CMO, a head of demand gen, a director of finance, and a CEO can all look at and understand in a big way. Some background about, my, about me. I love fueling growth. Um, I've had a, both a B2C and a B2B background. Uh, B2C with Indochino, making men's custom suits and jackets like this one. Um, Adam Fluid, I've been there for just over a year now. We've had uh, absolutely amazing growth. And uh, I'm also a huge advocate for Full Circle. So I love talking about them. I've given probably half a dozen referrals to Josh and his team in the last year. I'm obviously up on stage talking about how we use Full Circle. And the reason why I say advocate and why it's so important is that's what Influitive does. We kind of unleash the power of your advocates. And we have this really awesome vision that the future of marketing and sales is actually lies in your customer base and getting your customers to go out there and sell for you. And that's why we power um, these advocate programs that generate more referral leads, product reviews, case studies, content sharing, product feedback, whatever kind of marketing asks you have from your customers, uh, we're powering that. Uh, we're based in Toronto, and we've got uh, more than 200 customers using us now, including some of the biggest and fastest growing software companies in the world. So I want to start with our goals. This is super important. Like uh, the serious decisions uh, presentation this morning, everything starts with goals. I want to share with you our goals as a marketing team at Influitive. We've got uh, seven people on our team right now. We've got a very, very aggressive target. We want to grow 300% this year. Um, you know, our CEO is obsessed with growing as fast as possible. He wants to raise as much money as possible at the highest valuations. That requires tons of growth. And you know, my job is to really focus on new logos. We want to turn $1.4 million in marketing programs budget into 289 new logos, new advocates. They're going to make even more referrals for us. And if you look at it, 70% of those are targeted as resource by marketing. So a huge amount is coming from marketing campaigns uh, in a very, very big way. Um, so how do we do that? And it all goes back to Full Circle. We've been a Full Circle customer for about a year and a half now. And I want to give you the foundations of how we started with Full Circle. Um, your cases might be different. It might be a bigger team or more advanced. It might be the same stage as us. But I think understanding our thought process will really help you determine um, you know, how Full Circle can work with your organization and your marketing team. So this is kind of the foundation of Influitive when we started. We are a fairly new company. We had a product around for about two years, but it was still in the very early beta. Not a lot of customers are marketing data. So we've done, and we had campaigns, we had a small email database. Um, we were doing some stuff in marketing. There was a few people in terms of headcount, but it wasn't you know, a fully sophisticated, high performance, functioning marketing team. We were very data driven. So our founder uh, and CEO was the founder and CEO of Eloqua. Uh, created the marketing automation space and the whole category on marketing automation. Our team is uh, largely ex Eloqua, our VP of marketing. Spent seven years at Eloqua talking about data driven marketing and trying to figure out all the analytics and revenue and dashboards around that. So we had this team that was fairly new, uh, you know, a, a new company um, and a very strong background in marketing, uh, marketing automation. And, you know, what we like to say in Influitive is every good B2B marketing story starts with a referral. That's what our software does, helps you get more referrals. And, and ours came in the form of exactly. Um, so uh, we had a new VP of business development, uh, Chris Newton, who joined us from exactly where he was VP of marketing. And he had heard about this new tool. It was called Full Circle. And they were going to be doing really cool stuff to help measure the accountability and basically create an accounting system for your marketing. So we heard about it and we thought, okay, let's try it out and see how it works. So there was three things we liked about Full Circle um, that really influenced our decision of why one to use in the first place. And I hope it's a big part of why you're either using it now or considering Full Circle. The first thing is simplicity. So response management is done in a very straightforward and simple way. So ultimately, Full Circle is like an accounting system, right? It's an accounting system of your marketing. It is tracking every step of the marketing process, every response that comes in, putting a date stamp around it, 
and then adding up all those things. And it has to be done in a very simple way, and I think Full Circle does accomplish that. Second thing is transparency. So that should be number two, I guess. But uh, everyone in the company sees the exact same views. This is so important. If you've seen other pieces of software where you know, the marketing team looks at one view, the sales team has a different view, and the director of finance has a third view. And that's not the case with, with Full Circle. We really want an analytics and reporting solution where everyone sees the exact same thing. They can all see the same data, they see the same reports, and has the same value to everyone in the team, no matter what their function is in the company. And the third thing is that it's native. That's built directly inside of Salesforce. I think this is the, the most critical part out of all of this because there are other third-party tools where you have to log into a different piece of software to check it out. You've got to go somewhere else to find that information. But really, where is your team? Where is your data? It's all inside of Salesforce. That's the place where our finance team is looking at uh, customer accounts and measuring that data. It's where our customer success team is managing their accounts. It's where our marketing is. It's where sales is. And having all this reporting and dashboards directly inside of our data warehouse is so important. And I think these three things together are really what helped us define and what we liked about Full Circle in the first place. Okay, so how does Full Circle work? A lot of you guys probably already know this, but I wanted to explain just how simple it is. So the first thing is a campaign member. So everything has to be attached to campaigns. So whenever we have any type of marketing campaign that we do, doesn't matter if it's a new content asset that someone downloads, doesn't matter if it's a new ebook, uh, any kind of paid advertising, an event or a trade show or a webinar, we mark it as a campaign. And as soon as all these leads or contacts are added to campaign members, that's where the magic starts. That's where Full Circle determines uh, yeah, what's the date stamp for that, um, what is the next process, should it open up, should it go be sent to sales, what are the rules around that, and it starts measuring the funnel. So this is a really common funnel, this is a serious uh, demand waterfall. Our company is aligned around the, the, the serious methodology, and we have definitions for what all these things are. So an inquiry is a hand raise. Someone raised their hand saying, I'm interested remotely in something that you're doing by filling out that form or visiting us at a trade show or by talking to us. Uh, the MQL is an inquiry that has both uh, the fit and interest, so some sort of behavioral and demographic content around that that determines that it's good for us. An SAL is uh, a demo, a meeting, uh, what our SDR or BDR team is focused on booking. And then an SQO is a sales qualified opportunity. So our account executives have put it in their pipeline, they're committed to it, hopefully gonna close a lot of deals and make a closed one. So the beauty of this with Full Circle is, as soon as that campaign member is inserted, that response is activated, Full Circle is measuring every step of that process. And it's accounting for uh, how those inquiries turn into MQLs, turn into SALs, SQOs, close one, and I'm confident that it's timing it, it's measuring it, and that I can report in that data in a really valuable way. So enough background, let's talk about dashboards. And I wanna show you our three killer CMO dashboards and how we use it. These are the only three dashboards that we use in Influitive. There's probably a lot more stuff that we could get out of Full Circle, but we've chosen to keep it simple because we think that you know, there's so much that you can do, but if you really can keep it simple, you can get a lot of value out of these three dashboards. So the first one, our marketing funnel dashboard. What is happening in the funnel right now, right? Pretty obvious question, right? How are we doing this month? How are we doing this week? Tell me exactly right now where we're at in terms of opportunities created, SQOs, and deals closed. Number two, cohort analysis. How is your business changing over time? So how are the campaigns that we were doing last month or last quarter or last year comparing to the campaigns now? What's changing in our funnel in different stages? Is our SAL to SQO conversion rate increasing or decreasing? And this is a really important dashboard for us. Third thing is campaign influence. So a lot of talk about campaign influence. This is the one we use the least out of the three dashboards, but which marketing campaigns are actually driving revenue and are responsible for creating opportunities. So let's go into details. This is the exact screenshot of our first dashboard. We call it Revenue Metrics 2.0. And this is our dashboard that says what's happening to our business right now. I know it's very small, you can't see what it actually says. I'm gonna show you some close-ups. So the top part is what I call Demand Gen Central. I'm the head of Demand Gen and Fluidive. This is what I'm gonna be judged upon. This is what determines whether I get raises or promotions or I get fired. And I love having this data because this is what my VP of Marketing looks at and says, uh, he said on Sunday, this is, this, is, this is this month's data from Sunday. 
And he says, Alex, we're almost halfway through the month, and you're only at 18% of SALs created for this month. So you know, these are our targets. How are we hitting them? How are we performing on achieving those targets? And this is the data that gets reported not only within side of marketing, but our director of finance looks at this every single Sunday night, emails it to all of our leadership team and all of our investors on Monday morning. <coughs> so they have all this latest data around our weekly demand gen targets, and therefore on pace on a monthly basis to be hitting those targets. Cool thing is, is it's not just uh, it's not just the dashboard. I can actually click on any one of these and get a more detailed report about what's happening. So when I click on this report here, I can actually see a breakdown uh, per campaign name of what's going on here. So I can see, okay, here's the you know here's all the inquiries that generated this month, so in March. But here's the actual breakdown on a weekly basis. So I had a, a bad first week and then I picked it up and then this week hasn't had enough time to process itself. But I can break it down by individual campaign name. And again, everything comes back to the campaigns. So I probably have maybe 100 new campaigns that I create inside of Salesforce every single quarter that are drilled down to individual content assets, events, trade shows, initiatives that we're doing. And I can break down the inquiries based on, this, on these campaigns. Next. This is the justify your existence part of that dashboard. So this is the one that we're talking about before, you know, how much is marketing sourcing, how much is sales sourcing. And we've got data by on SALs, so opportunities created, and also SQOs. And we don't fight over the source of things. So if a lead was opened up due to a marketing campaign and converted to an opportunity, that's marketing source. Now, if a salesperson created that lead, that's sales sourced. If a marketing person if a marketer, uh, sorry, if a lead responded to a marketing campaign, the salesperson talked to them, and that response said, talk to my VP instead, and the salesperson in in created that encounter and opened up the opportunity with a new lead, that's sales sourced. So we're not trying to really fight over it very much here. We're very aligned as a marketing and sales team about the total number of opportunities and SQOs we want to create, but this is a great visual breakdown of saying, Okay, in the last year, how much is coming from marketing? Uh, in our case, about two thirds. And then how much is coming from other sources like sales, our BD and partner team, other and employee referrals. So the other thing we have in that dashboard is we have some really key business metrics. So for us, referrals are really huge for us. Our software creates referrals for B2B software companies. And we have a customer marketer on our team whose job is to create as many referrals as possible. How do we track referrals? Through a campaign, really simple, right? Anytime a referral comes in, they get added to a referrals campaign, and this dashboard shows on a regular basis how many referrals are we generating every single week, and for us, it's one of the key business metrics that we have in place. Uh, another key metric we have in place is around key campaigns, open opportunities. Uh, we actually go into more detail about this in the campaign influence dashboard, but this is at a very high level. Okay, show me how many op open opportunities we have from our campaigns. And again, this has good insight into what kind of campaigns we're actually doing. Um, you know, contact us, the one I want to have even more of, that's at the top, and that creates the most opportunities. But referrals are a close second. This is an ebook asset, another ebook asset, an SDR, outbound campaign, watching a demo video on our website. All this stuff is really broken down. It's very easy to associate all those assets or campaigns to actual opportunities that are being created. Okay, dashboard number two, marketing funnel conversion rates. Uh, this is actually my favorite dashboard. I love it. And the reason why I love it is I think B2B marketers don't use it and they don't understand why this is so important. <coughs> so I come from a B2C world previously with Indochino. Uh, it was e-commerce, men's custom suits, uh, very fast growing business. And in e-commerce when it's so transactional, the only way to look at data is from a cohort. Like that was just the only way to look at it. We would say, okay, how many sales do we create in January of a given month? How many customers do we require? What was their lifetime value that month? And then show me their lifetime value over time. That was the only way we could look at our data and say, you know, definitively, what is the value of our customers and what's happening? Now, B2B is very different, right? We have super long sales cycles. We have a lot of fluctuation in our business. There's multiple touch points and influence deals. And it's a lot harder for us to say, what is actually contributing to revenue and how is our business changing over time? And this dashboard helps us answer the question of how is our business changing? Now, if you just started with full circle, you probably don't have enough of this stuff filled out. So it might be a little hard for you to say, okay, show me how my business is changing over time. But for us, we look at cohort analysis by response month. So what that means is I take all my responses for a given month and I lump them together and count them as one thing. 
So all the responses from February 2015, that's one category. And I want to look over time and say, from, that, from all those responses in February, show me how many of them progressed to the SAL stage, the SQO stage, and the close one stage, and then compare that to other months. So this is actually telling me how my business is changing. I can break it down by all inquiries, just MQL inquiries and just non-MQL inquiries. And the reason why these numbers have changed is we've actually changed our definitions of an MQL in the last two months based on our business logic and how that's changed. But basically, I can see, okay, this is September. How are things progressing over time? What does that mean? And you probably wonder, okay, what business questions does that help me discover? Because yes, these dashboards are great and cohort analysis is great. And I love knowing that 10% of my inquiries from September converted to opportunities. That's awesome. What is that actually telling me? And how does it affect my business? So here's a great question. So if you look at the blue line on this chart, you can see that we were able to massively scale the amount of inquiries we're generating. So we went from a world where we had about 1,200 inquiries per month, 1,200 hand raises, and now we had 2,800. We had a really strong fall season. We turned up the paid advertising, tons of events, things improved, right? However, we also saw that the actual conversion rates of inquiries to opportunities dropped significantly. And they stayed low. It went from a world where 5 6% of inquiries converted to SALs down to 2 to 3%. That's a big warning sign. It means that maybe we shouldn't be generating so many inquiries. Maybe we don't have enough SDRs or BDRs on our team to field those inquiries. Maybe we're not doing a good enough job of prioritizing those inquiries so the SDRs know which are the strongest ones for us to follow up with. But by having this data in place, we can actually see the difference and see how the business is changing. If we didn't have a cohort analysis, Maybe the amount of opportunities generated stays flat or even increased significantly. But this actually tells us, yes, you increased volume, good job, Alex, but the conversion rate went down a lot. So how can you fix your business? This is what we're attacking right now. So we're saying, okay, now that our number of inquiries is super high, what are the tactics we can do uh, from an SDR and a marketing perspective to increase the conversion rate? Number two our SAL to SQL conversion rate. So we discovered that uh, for a long time, you know, May through August, uh, our SAL, so demo to SQO, which is demos to AEs actually putting in their pipeline, conversion rate went from about 33% up to 45, 48%, and then back down to 30. So this is amazing info for our sales team. And I went to our VP of sales and I said, look at this, one of two things is happening. Either the SDRs have really tightened up their qualification and they're only passing through demos and booking demos that are much higher quality, or the AEs are getting much more anal and they're only putting deals in their pipeline and think they can close at a much higher uh, rate. But having this data shows us uh, definitively that something is changing in our business, right? The, the, re the, the, the interaction, the change from an opportunity to a sales call opportunity is changing. And this data shows us uh, from a cohort standpoint, what those changes are. And talking to a VP of sales, this is really valuable data for her to help coach our SDR and account executives on you know, whether they should in fact be tightening up their restrictions or they should be passing along more demos or whatever else. Number three, is there a new lead scoring actually working? This is a great question. So because uh, we have uh, campaign members uh, we're able to tie other pieces of data to that campaign number and to that response. So for example, in August, we launched a new lead scoring system. Uh, we built it ourselves internally, very simple. We graded people on a behavioral and demographic score, and we put them in one of four buckets, funnel one, funnel two, funnel three, and funnel four. Now, how do you actually know if that's working? The goal is that funnel one should convert from inquiries to SALs at a higher rate than funnel twos. That's obvious, right? But how do you actually report on that? How do you actually have it natively built inside of Salesforce to show you that data and to have it accessible for you? And that's what we have here. Because it's all in Salesforce, we can uh, take our response date and also add in the funnel score and show inquiries, MQLs, SALs, SQOs, and the conversion rate right next to it. So we have some really good insights here. Like for example, um, why is our inquiry to SAL conversion rate higher uh, for funnel three than funnel four? Does that mean that there's something wrong there? Why is the volume of funnel three so low? Should we be passing more leads to funnel three? Um, 
So actually giving that data and having it tied into your response management is really valuable. And it doesn't matter if it's lead scoring or some other kind of data that you want to share or kind of put side by side with your response management, but having that cohort analysis tied in and directly inside of Salesforce makes things so much easier. Funnel velocity. So our business is very unpredictable in that deals don't take a set amount of time to close. We have deals that close in two days and deals that close in 14 days and 60 days and 120 days and 500 days. And for us to build a model around that is tough. But because Full Circle is capturing all that data and putting timestamps, I can actually measure all that and build better reporting around how long does it actually take deals to close. So this is a list of, uh, of a sample of deals that we have closed, so new logos for us. And this shows, okay, here's the amount, number of days from inquiry to SAL, from SAL to SQO, SQO to close one, all those stages. And then I can graph that data. And I can build better models around predicting our volume. So our old model is very simple. We said, we think it takes two months for a sales qualified opportunity to become a deal. And that was a great approximation for our business. But by having this kind of funnel velocity data, I actually said that's not true. What is actually true is that some fraction of our deals close the same month that they're qualified, some fraction close the second month, the third month, the fourth month, the fifth month, and some even close 10 months after their, their sales qualified. And because of this data, we could build a better model to now forecast not just on a two month average benchmark, but it actually takes into account the various percentages of the chance of a deal closing in a given month. And what that's done is it means we can go back to our goals and our SQO targets and adjust them to better fit our new logos targets and make sure they're actually aligned around the timing that it takes for deals to close. And all that's built in as part of our funnel velocity. The third thing is marketing and campaign influence. Um, like I said, this is the one that I use the least. I'm actually hoping this year to start using it a little bit more. Um, but it's also important, and a lot of you guys care about campaign influence and which campaigns are creating things. My advice is keep it simple. Keep it as simple as possible. And I know maybe it's not what Rowan wants, wants you to hear, or the rest of the Full Circle team, but we think simplicity is the easiest model. So we've got two models in our campaign influence. The first model, uh, key campaign, uh, gives the full value of the opportunity to the campaign response that came immediately before the opportunity was created. So the last thing that that person did before the opportunity was created, give them all the credit. That's one model. The other model, which is broken down as the more campaign influence model, is give an equal value to every single campaign that resulted in that opportunity being created. So really simple, right? One is kind of last touch, I guess, and one is equal touch. Very, very simple, but very helpful. Uh, again, we have all of our opportunities broken down we filter just for new logos and pilots. That's what we're focusing on as a marketing team. We have other teams focused on upsells and cross-sells and renewals and that kind of stuff. And this enables us to look at that data. Hey, Alex. Yes. I have a question. Yes. So um, Full Circle does a really awesome job of trying, kind of analyzing all of the uh, Salesforce-centric campaigns, and your dashboards are great. Um, talk a little bit about um, how you would integrate an external marketing app, you know, like an Elico Marketo Acton, because, you know, you have to assign those people to campaigns, but those campaigns don't always understand member status in the same way as we do in, the, in Salesforce. Sure. Those apps don't do any, they, they never analyze anything when it comes to opportunity or, or waterfall, truly. Sure. So how, how does your app, how, how does Includive, deal with that, sure. what's, your, what, what's your take on that? So we're Marketo users, we were Acton before this, so we've experienced full circle both with Acton and Marketo. And it's really simple, we actually don't use Marketo's revenue channels at all. We don't use channels function of Marketo, which is like their main attribution model. Marketo has a great function, it says add the Salesforce campaign. That's all we do. So you know, we're committed to full circle, we're committed to the campaigns thing. We think having that revenue information all the way to the deals closing is really important. So we house our data in Salesforce um, inside of this campaign function. So, so anytime your, your, anyone- Your advice is then to people that have these systems is to basically say, scrap all those reports, just, you know, look, you know, are you sort of truth with Salesforce? I, I look at Marketo for open rates, for click rates, that kind of stuff. But if I look at revenue, I look inside of Salesforce. That's where your revenue team is housed at the end of the day. 
And it's super easy to assign any of those Marketo actions to Salesforce campaigns, right? When anyone fills out a Marketo form on our website, the, the, the smart list, the smart action is add the Salesforce campaign. Done. It's super easy. Our Marketo and Salesforce are synced. Um, so there, there's not, I don't find a lot of challenges with doing that. Um, it does mean I have to create a lot of campaigns in Salesforce, but they're super easy to organize. I use uh, parent campaigns and child campaigns for different kind of content assets. And it is very simple for us to organize it that way. And do you show the hierarchical kind of um, relationship between the parent and the child in these dashboards? Um, I don't, but it is possible. I'll show you one of the filters that I use. So I don't really care about parent and child, but I do care about campaign type. So we have eight different campaign types, um, webinar, paid, event or trade show, contact us, referral, two other ones that I forget. So it's super easy for me to filter any of these dashboards by campaign type to show just the results for that one specific kind of distribution channel or type of campaign. Perfect, thank you. So the same thing with opportunity creation. You know, the previous dashboard talked about revenue. Sorry, I can't show you guys how much opportunity amounts we've created from those things. You would be surprised by how awesome eBooks and content assets are creating value. And I would double down all your content marketing efforts if I were you. Um, but we can look at opportunity creation. And, and I can see here that um, some of our uh, big campaigns here have created tons of opportunities for us. Again, referrals are big for us. And I, I can't preach enough about how important referral marketing is to your business in the B2B world. But we've had some major eBook assets that have created tons of opportunities for us. And this is what we look at. Yes? Uh, just for that opportunity, yeah. So the, the, you know, someone responds to a campaign, they get opened up. If the SDR creates opportunity from that, that's what's going to get the influence from it. Uh, are new, new, are net new names responding to my campaigns? This is a really good question, right? So you're wondering, is my database actually growing? And again, with that data built into it, one of the, the features of our campaign influence dashboard is showing you that data. So the answer is, in our case, yes. So um, you know, the, green, the green line shows net new names versus old names, and if, if the green line was getting smaller, I'd be worried about our business. And in fact, because we're trying to grow 300% this year, I think the green line probably has to be even higher for us to actually achieve that growth. Because Full Circle is ultimately an accounting system for your marketing, uh, it knows whether a name is a net new name, whether that response is a net new name for your business. Okay, and this is what I was talking about in terms of easy to use filters. Because everything is in Salesforce, we just have uh, filters built in for all these reports. So if I want to just filter by campaign type, I can. So show me that cohort analysis, but now look at just paid channels, or just our events or trade shows. Or show me our campaign influence, but just look at you know, webinars, and how webinars, out of all of our webinar campaigns, how do they contribute to, uh, to campaign influence. Uh, same with response date. So which month, which quarter, all that stuff is super easy to filter out. And again, I can't stress enough how important having it natively inside of Salesforce is for us to achieve all this data, because we can cross-reference it with other types of things, right? Suppose I want to look at just pilots versus new logos. I can because that data is in Salesforce. Suppose I want to look at just you know, types of, of, of company size, uh, what, what exactly is doing, looking at mid-enterprise versus enterprise. That data is in Salesforce, so I can easily cross-reference it, and all these reports can be customized to show just that specific filter. Okay. Enough about dashboards. Why do we actually use them? The end goal is not dashboards, right? Like, I don't really don't care about dashboards. I, I'm passionate about dashboards because of what they enable me to do. And what they enable is they enable us to do awesome marketing campaigns. So if our finance team and our CEO didn't trust us to spend the money well, to report on it, to have the right metrics in place, to be able to see all these dashboards in a transparent way, to be accountable to our revenue, we wouldn't have this much money to spend. We couldn't do super creative campaigns, right? And this is the beauty of, 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 of me, of a full circle for me. It's the transparency and trust that it builds in our organization. Our director of finance loves full circle. She's not interested in marketing whatsoever, but she loves going through her reports. She asks me questions about them all the time, and she comes up to her own insights based on our three dashboards. She sees the exact same dashboards as I do, and she's able to use that in a really powerful way. And ultimately, the goal is for us to do more creative stuff. So when we want to do a, a late night style talk show, like we did last year, it was called BAM TV. It was a really big success for us. We earned the right to do that because we had the reporting uh, to be able to show the results of it and show how it actually contributed to revenue opportunities. Number two, 
the most up-to-date marketing numbers at your fingertips. How many times do you need the latest data for weekly results, quarterly results, board reviews, board decks, investor meetings, all that kind of stuff? All the time, right? So I just log into Salesforce, go to dashboards, I have my three full circle dashboards, that's all the data I need is right there. I can dig down deeper if I need to, I can answer really complicated business questions uh, in a very simple way, and it's all very accessible. And the, the biggest benefit to me is I'm not a VP of marketing or CMO just yet, right? So what am I supposed to be doing? I'm supposed to be like answering these questions for our VP of marketing and drilling into the numbers and finding it. And I don't have to use Excel to do any of that. The data lives inside of Salesforce. I trust it. I understand how it works in a big way. We're about to close a, a, a large round of funding for our Series B. And we've met with so many investors. We've had so many presentations. And every one of those presentations needs the latest numbers on marketing. Show us your pipeline. Show us what's happening. Show us what, what's, what, what's being sourced. Show us your cohort analysis. Show us all the stuff. We didn't have to use Excel for any of that. All the latest, most up-to-date marketing stuff was right there, available for us all the time to use however we want it. I think the combination of having this data available in the most transparent, the most simple way is really the, the problem that Full Circle solves for us and Inclutive. Thank you.